It is 5.55 in the morning and I have come down to Cape Hillsborough to see the famous beach kangaroos that come out onto the beach as the sun is rising. This is gonna be sick. Steady through the highs and lows Closer than your skin and bones I'll be here for you I'll be here for you Good morning guys, JJ here and I hope you're all doing well. I tell you what, I could not be more in my element if I tried at the moment. That was my kind of perfect morning. I'm down here at the Cape Hillsborough National Park, down on the beach, which is home to some pretty famous kangaroos and wallabies that come down every morning to have their brekkie as the sun rises. The kangaroos and wallabies come down to have a bit of a feed. They used to just come down and scavenge, you know, some seaweed and stuff off the beach, but now they've actually started offering them some specialised kangaroo and wallaby food. National Parks comes down and makes sure it's all well managed and they get a little bit of food. It's become such a big tourist attraction. I think that's why, because it is such a special place. But once the food's gone, they're just such curious, cheeky little buggers, and they just came right up to me, to other people, to the camera. And once the roos are finished with their brekkie, they just head back up into the bush, which is what you want to see. It's all in the roos' turn. There's no stress, they're just doing their own thing. It's exactly what you want to see with a human animal encounter. Now, I've got to make sure I get my wildlife facts in. The two species down on the beach this morning were eastern grey kangaroos and agile wallabies. Now, the eastern greys have featured on this channel probably nearly as much as I have. Those guys are absolutely everywhere, have a range that's the entire eastern third of Australia. Whereas the agile wallabies, they're found more in the northern end of the country. They're actually one of the largest wallabies. They're a beautiful golden color. So it was really cool to see those guys because I don't think I've ever seen them in the wild before. Now it's really quite easy to get here to Cape Hillsborough. Uh, I actually stayed in Mackay, which is about 40 minutes drive away. It did mean I had to get up at about, yeah, quarter to five this morning to make it for sunrise. But there is also a couple of campsites in the area and a tourist park, literally right next to the beach if that's what you would prefer. But irregardless of the kangaroos, this place is just incredible. Full 360. Wish I had a bit more time to spend down here. I think I've said that at just about every place I've visited so far, but it's so true. Like you don't want to rush through because some of these places are just so incredibly unique. The sun is well and truly up now and it is unfortunately time to leave this amazing place. I'm going to be leaving the coast and heading west a little bit out to a national park where I'll be camping for a few days which I am really really looking forward to. Uh, there's a few stops along the way that I'm keen to make as well so yeah time to hit the road. Now I just got to remember where I left my thongs. I hope they're still there. Oh yes. I'll tell you what the best type of breakfast food is this time of year. Strawberries, baby, they're like a dollar a pun because it's strawberry season and they are so good. All right, so I've just arrived at Yungela National Park. I think I'm saying that right, which uh, the National Park is my final stop for tonight. But there's a few different sections and the one I'm at right now is Finch Hatton Gorge. Now, I would have got here a little bit earlier, but I had a bit of a stopover. I had to make some phone calls because of this. All right, it's not coming up that well on the camera, but that is a crack in my windscreen. Which is really annoying because I'm gonna have to get that fixed before I head back down to the Gold Coast because this is a pretty long drive. So I've actually booked in to get that fixed in Mackay on Wednesday. Hopefully it doesn't get any worse over the next few days. Uh, but yeah, Finch Hatton Gorge, let's get back to the good stuff. So I've just arrived here. I've heard this place is absolutely spectacular. It's been recommended to me by a couple of people. Apparently some beautiful cascades as you walk your way up. Uh, I think it's a couple of kilometers to get there. There's even a swimming spot at the end. I haven't researched it too much myself as far as looking at pictures and videos, so it'll be a nice surprise. All right, so there are two main cascades that you can access. One is the Arulan Cascades, which is about an hour walk, and the other one is the Wheel of Fire Cascades, 
which is about twice as long. Wheel of Fire Cascades, that sounds epic. Uh, I reckon I'm gonna try and get to both of them today. But another thing I wanna mention before I get too far away from the road is how beautiful the drive is to get out here. You pass through all the sugarcane plantations and then a couple of little creek crossings and gravel roads on the way in. It's really, really nice. Now most of the Yungela National Park is made up of these subtropical rainforests and I love exploring these rainforests. There's some back at home on the Gold Coast as well, but it literally feels like you step back in time. These rainforests are so ancient. Just waiting for a dinosaur to like pop his head out of the bushes at any moment. So there is no way this walk is gonna take an hour having a look at that map, but I think I'm gonna check out the Araluan Cascades. I said it wrong before, before heading back for the Wheel of Fire. So this place is absolutely stunning. Definitely worth all the hype. How do places this beautiful even exist? This is just unreal. And this is just the first of the two cascades. There's a fair few people around, but not a lot of people swimming, which makes me think that the water is going to be pretty cold. I think I'm going to go check the other cascade out first and then decide which one I'm going to go swimming in. Also, definitely worked up a little bit of a sweat on that trek. It's a nice easy one, but it's definitely getting more hot and humid the further north that I go which makes this water look all the more inviting. Right, so I'm just gonna head over the Wheel of Fire Cascades now and check them out. They've gotta be something pretty special to top that, but either way, whether it's back there or at the Wheel of Fire, I'm definitely getting the water and having a swim. Now this track is definitely a little tougher than the last one. I didn't get him on camera, but I tell you what, nothing gets your heart jump-started quicker than seeing a little snake slither across the path when you're least expecting it. Going a long way up. Looking at this, I think it's gonna be worth it. Oh man, I knew this was gonna be worth it. This place is stunning. Alright, here we go. It's cold. <laughs> well, I'm having deja vu. Damn, that is so cold. One, two, three. That <sighs> wasn't so bad. I'll tell you what, this is one of those places where the camera just can't do it justice. This is magic, man. This place is legit. All right, my body settled a bit. Definitely not feeling as cold as before, but if you're in this area, guys, head west from Mackay to Finch Hatton Gorge. This place is so worth the hype. Thanks to everyone that recommended it to me. And uh, yeah, the next couple of days I'll be camping a little bit further into the National Park. I've got a pretty specific mission. I'm after something that lays eggs, has a duck bill, and is venomous. I probably don't need to say much more for you guys to guess exactly what I'm after. So. If you're keen to see what the next few days hold, be sure to subscribe down below. Hit that bell so you know when the next video comes out. Give Queensland, give Finch Hatton Gorge, give this video a big thumbs up, big like down below. I really appreciate it. Thanks for letting me ramble on, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.